As a single first aid provider, first assess scene safety. This includes taking standard precautions. If the scene is safe, assess responsiveness. If the person appears unresponsive, hey. tap them and ask loudly, hey. are you okay? Are you okay? If the person does not respond, call 911 to activate EMS using a mobile device or activate your EAP. When activating EMS, listen to and follow the dispatcher's instructions. If the person is responsive and badly hurt, looks or acts very ill, or quickly gets worse, activate EMS and or your EAP. After activating and unless they are readily available to you, send someone to get the first aid kit and AED. Even if you are not a trained CPR provider, bring the AED with the first aid kit in case someone arrives to help that can operate it as needed. Assess the person's breathing for no more than 10 seconds. Look at the chest and face for signs of normal breathing. Normal breathing is effortless, quiet, and regular. Weak, irregular gasping, snorting, snoring, or gurgling sounds are known as agonal breaths. This is not normal breathing. It is a sign of cardiac arrest. Take action based on the person's responsiveness and breathing. If an unresponsive person is not breathing normally or only gasping, immediately start CPR. For adults and teens in cardiac arrest, persons not formally trained in CPR should provide compression-only CPR with or without dispatcher assistance. Position adult or teen on a firm, flat surface. Push hard and fast in the center of the chest. Continue until trained CPR or EMS providers take over or the person starts responding by breathing, moving, or reacting. If the person is unresponsive and breathing normally, maintain an open airway. Place an uninjured, unresponsive person on their side in the recovery position to help protect the airway. Rapidly scan the person for life-threatening conditions. Look for severe external bleeding, shock, altered mental status, stroke, chest pain or discomfort, and other life-threatening conditions. If present, immediately provide appropriate first aid. Give naloxone for a suspected opioid overdose, if available. If the person is breathing and appears responsive, obtain consent. Introduce yourself and ask, may I help you? Well, I'm Thomas. Can I help you? Yeah, please help. If the person consents, rapidly assess them for life-threatening conditions. If any life-threatening conditions are present, immediately provide appropriate first aid. If the person shows signs of shock, keep them lying down face up. Consider performing a secondary assessment to gather more information while waiting for EMS. Sometimes the problem is obvious, such as a visible wound. Other times, you may need to ask about the person's symptoms. Well, how are you feeling? A symptom is something felt or experienced, such as pain or dizziness. Do you have any pre-existing medical conditions? Medical identification jewelry can be a vital source of information in the event the person is unable to speak or becomes unresponsive. Look for a small emblem or tag worn on a bracelet or necklace or similar jewelry containing inscribed information, such as diabetes, epilepsy, food or drug allergies, and bleeding disorders. Visually assess the person from head to toe. Are there any other pain? Use the DOTS acronym as a guide. Look for deformities and open injuries. Ask about tenderness and swelling. If necessary and with consent, remove or cut away clothing to get a better look at an injured or painful body part. Provide appropriate first aid for any problems found. Keep the person as comfortable as possible. Regularly reassess scene safety, responsiveness, breathing, and the effectiveness of first aid provided. Stay with the person until someone with more advanced training takes over or EMS arrives and pass on any information gathered.